a British journalist recently advised the European Union to follow in the tradition of Charlemagne. What is Charlemagne's legacy? Few people know, even though the most prestigious prize in Europe is named after him. The rise of a dangerous new European empire is one of the most critical prophecies in the Bible. Learn how Europe will go the way of Charlemagne one last time. Next on The Key of David with Gerald Fleury. Greetings, everyone. I have just seen the first crystal clear headline about the Holy Roman Empire in a newspaper. It was in the Financial Times of Britain, and now they can see that the Holy Roman Empire is on the scene, and that's news to them and most people in the media, but it's old news to us because we have been prophesying it for over 70 years. And that is truly amazing. Here's the headline, The Holy Roman Empire Can Help Inspire a Different European Union. And that's from the Financial Times, January 20, 2016. Finally, you see, the media sees what we have been prophesying for these 70 years. Finally, there is a clear headline where people see what we have been talking about oh so long. I mean, this is one of the most magnificent prophecies in all the Bible. And we have been telling people that it's going to, this Holy Roman Empire is going to come on the scene in this very end time, the last head of the Holy Roman Empire. It's about to end forever. And also, people finally see that it is that prophecy of Revelation 17 and other prophecies in Daniel and so on that we have been talking about for all these years. And it's that Holy Roman Empire is going to rise up and shock this world. Finally, people see it's here, but now they're misinterpreting what it's going to do. But finally, they have seen the great prophecy that we have been talking about for oh such a long time. I mean, that's the first headline I've seen with real striking clarity about that prophecy and about that empire. So we have been telling you about the really the tremendous suffering that will come on this world as a result of that. And also we've been telling you about the conclusion to that Holy Roman Empire. Jesus Christ Himself is going to return to this earth at the conclusion of that very Holy Roman Empire that you see on the world scene, and it's almost fully formed right now. It's there for everybody to see. It's one of the greatest prophecies in all the Bible, and we have literally been proclaiming it for over 70 years. How could we possibly know that was going to happen unless we got it out of Bible prophecy. Now again, you see it's a new site to people like the Financial Times, but it's, it's a, or new insight I should say, but it's not new to us at all. We knew it was coming and have known it is going to come for these many years. But the problem here is they talk about, well, they, that this Holy Roman Empire can help in, inspire a different European Union. Yes, it can, but not the different European Union that they're talking about. And it isn't going to be inspiring. It's not to, certainly not to the opposition or the enemies of uh, that empire. Look, if you check the history, of all the other, let's say the other six heads of the Holy Roman Empire, I'm telling you they were all bloody, bloody empires. They had wars galore, and they initiated those wars. Is this one going to be different? I mean, that's in your history books. Anybody can read that and know that and understand it. It's been on the scene. That empire's been on the scene for about 1,500 years. And anybody can study that history. So it's going to be, see, they, they say it's going to be different in a good way, and it's going to help all of Europe and inspire Europe, but it, it's going to be just like the Holy Roman Empires in the past, only it's going to be bloodier than all six of them combined. 
Now that's what your Bible says in its prophecy, but it has this magnificent ending that ought to also just, well, make our hair stand on end and enjoy, because it is that amazing. But they're dangerously wrong about the way they think this is all going to develop, and it says in the Bible that in the Jerusalem area that the blood is going to be up to the horse's bridles, if you can imagine that. That's in, in Jerusalem and around Jerusalem and in the Jewish state. That's, and, and it's almost here. But it, it has in it bad news, very bad news, but also the most wonderful news you could possibly ever hear in this world. The most inspiring news, if you see where, how it concludes, and there are many prophecies that tell you that, just many of them. But all these years, Herbert Armstrong started proclaiming that message more, even more than 70 years ago, but almost nobody believed him, and many people scoffed. But when you talk about the Holy Roman Empire today, people don't scoff because if you explain it to them, they can see that it's there. We need to understand what it all means. There's no scoffing today about it being here, but look, this is all a miracle. And no, no man can tell you when the Holy Roman Empire is going to rise on the world scene. Only God can do that. That's a miracle. And nobody can, can interpret what, how, what it's going to do. That too is a, a miracle and an understanding that comes only from God. What a, what, a, what a prophecy it is. We have a picture of uh, now what we want to show you of uh, when Herbert Armstrong wrote in the Plain Truth magazine, and he entitled that article, Is a World Dictator About to Appear? Or a Modern Charlemagne? Is, that, is he about to appear on the world scene? And that was written in February 1934. And he came to see it more clearly after World War II and kept prophesying and saying that it was going to rise again, that Germany was going to rise from all the rubble that, they, that was around them after World War II and all the destruction that was around them. Mr. Armstrong was saying there's going to become, there's a, a world dictator is going to come on the world scene and he'll be in charge of the Holy Roman Empire. Here's what he said in the subheading, 10 nations, one government. A united Europe, a holy Roman Empire blitzkrieg is what he was talking about. Here is a world dictator coming on, on the scene, and it, he's going to electrify the world. He is going, that, that man is going to electrify the world. You know yourself today, if you understand European uh, politics and uh, the economy, that Germany dictates the economy of Europe and I mean dictate it, and soon they're going to dictate what it's doing militarily, that is, ten kings or ten nations that we've been talking about for these many years. That's coming on the world scene. Notice the prophecy over in Jeremiah 28 and verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before you of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and evil and of pestilence. Now this is just giving you a big historical and prophetic overview of prophecy, and this prophecy here in particular. Verse 9 says, The prophet which prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Eternal has truly sent him. So if this major, major prophecy of the Bible has been prophesied all these years, and there are over a hundred scriptures pertaining to this prophecy. You can prove this very prophecy to yourself, but when it comes to pass, God says, you can know that, that God sent this man with this message. And this is one of the greatest prophecies in all the Bible. And so what did that make Herbert W. Armstrong? He prophesied this prophecy, and frankly, 
many, many more besides this, and they're all coming to fruition and coming to pass right now. Right now, at this time. And we need faith to believe God. That's what we all need. I need more of that. You need more of that. We all do. And God gives us faith if we'll ask for that gift. It's a gift from God, and we need that faith. The Financial Times said this, We should look to the example of Charlemagne, writes Peter Wilson. And he says we should look to Charlemagne. Well, how about that? Should we look to Charlemagne, the, the First Reich, it's called? Hitler was the Third Reich. Should we look to Hitler? Well, here they're saying you, we should look to Charlemagne, but how different was Charlemagne than Adolf Hitler in World War II? In a war he caused and caused the death of 60 million people, or should we really look to the, the uh, example of Charlemagne? I mean, people continue to revere that man down to the present time. Otto the Great was called, uh, they said he had the crown of Charlemagne. Napoleon was hailed as a reborn Charlemagne. Adolf Hitler was a faithful student of Charlemagne's vision of Europe. I should say he was faithful. Charlemagne had the First Reich. Hitler called his empire the Third Reich. Should we look to those men as examples? That's really a, a, almost like a sick joke if you understand the history of what I'm talking to you about. It really is that bad. Hitler started World War II and he, he, he tried to exterminate all the Jews in Europe and did kill six million of them. And Charlemagne had a similar hatred for the Jews. And uh, you could get into serious trouble for even keeping, keeping the seventh day Sabbath that the Jews keep. But what about this looking to Charlemagne? That is frightening to even ponder. But here, notice what it says about Adolf Hitler. During the rhetorical passages, his voice mounted to the pitch of delirium. He was a man transformed and possessed. We were in the presence of a miracle. That was, that's from John Tolan's book on page 598. I mean, there was a supernatural miracle there. There was some evil influence from an evil spirit. Even after World War II, uh, Germany was finally beaten by Britain and America and other countries. And here's what uh, Winston Churchill and uh, Franklin Roosevelt said, quote, It is our inflexible purpose to destroy German militarism and Nazism and ensure, to ensure Germany will never again be able to disturb the peace of the world. They also started World War I and the War of 1870 and, and many other wars throughout their history. They just are prone to do that because they're a part of, in most cases, a part of the Holy Roman Empire. Notice what the Encyclopedia Britannica explains. The first three decades of Charlemagne's reign were dominated by military campaigns, which were prompted by a variety of factors the need to defend his realm against external foes and internal separatists, a desire for conquest and booty, a keen sense of opportunities offered by changing power relationships, and an urge to spread Christianity. And as I said, it was illegal to keep Saturday as your Sabbath. This, this man waded through blood, rivers of blood, it is said, in conquering people and converting them to his belief, his religious belief. Let me give you a quote here. As emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, this is from our, our book on uh, the Holy Roman Empire and prophecy. As emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, Charles felt it his duty to spread the Christian faith using whatever means necessary. The New Encyclopedia Britannica says, quote, the violent methods by which this missionary task was carried out had been unknown to the earlier Middle Ages, 
and the sanguinary or bloody punishment meted out to those who broke canon law, that's, that's his religious law, or continued to engage in pagan practices, as he called them, or he understood them, called forth criticism in Charles' own circle. His own circle of, of friends were beginning to say, What, is, what are you doing uh, being so bloody in your pursuits, your warfare? Unlike anything we've done in the past. Well, how about that? Are we to look to that example? That's what the Financial Times says. Are we to look to an example like that where he was going out and, and, and just killing people unlike they had ever done before in the Holy Roman Empire? No history like that. Notice what it says. Well, I'll just paraphrase what it says about the Jews. They couldn't uh, uh, marry uh, Christians. And if a Christian even ate a meal with a Jew, he risked ex excommunication. Remember how Adolf Hitler hated the Jews and wanted to exterminate them? Well, Charlemagne certainly didn't teach them very well, or treat them very well, excuse me. Is this the example that we want to look to? Hitler looked to that example, I'm telling you. He, he also headed uh, the, the Holy Roman Empire, the sixth head. Is that the kind of person we want to look to? He even called his Third Reich that, that after Charlemagne. And look what it did to him, and look what it did to Germany. Is that the example we want to look to? Do these people really understand the history that they're talking about? That's alarming, and it needs to be understood, because let me tell you, it's not going to turn out the way the Financial Times writer thinks it is. Not at all. It's going to be just radically contrary to that. Well, anyhow, Charlemagne allowed the church to regulate the lives of the subjects, and it says here in our, in our booklet, despite Charlemagne's wars and violence, his reign was not one of brutality and barbarism alone. Historians speak of the, the, the Renaissance and a, a revival of arts and learning that took place under Charlemagne. And it says here, to the Western mind, the image of an enlightened ruler promoting education for all seems incompatible with a violent warrior converting thousands by the sword. But it teaches us an important point. Culture and peace do not always go together. Modern Europe may appear to be a cultured and sophisticated group of nations, but as history reveals, that does not mean it is immune to Charlemagne's style of violence. Need to keep that in mind. That was all done, you see, in the uh, by Charlemagne and those who followed in that tradition. But uh, here, here again, for over seventy years, we've been talking about this, and and uh, you just hear all, nothing about the Holy Roman Empire. You read nothing about it, and and yet now it's finally here, and people are beginning to see it and wondering, well, where is it going to take us? What is going to be the outcome of all this? Well, you'll only know that if you understand Bible prophecy. And it is going to double shock and triple shock this world. And so we need to know what, what is going to happen and uh, get to doing what we should be doing so God will protect us. And He will do that to those who are obedient to Him, those who help get this message out to the world, who are doers of the Word. They do what they read in the Bible. And God is going to protect those people. He always has. Now, there have been exceptions, of course. Many prophets have been killed as a witness against this evil world. But let me tell you, the analysis of the Financial Times is just dreadfully wrong. And yet the, we have a conclusion that's going to be just uh, practically make us faint that it's, it's so wonderful. But in the past, you see, the, the media has just rejected these wonderful truths. Well, you can see there was a Bernard Connolly in 1995 wrote a book. He was on the inside of the uh, 
EU or European Union, and he, he, he wrote a book about the rotten heart of Europe. And he says it's inside there, it's a battle uh, of who's going to get control of that Europe, European super state. And it's pretty obvious to everybody now who has already gotten control of it, and that's Germany. And he said the end could be ghastly. Yes, it could. And maybe the Financial Times writer should read his book because it is alarming indeed. He said that European Union is uh, just a, uh, it's a European cloak for German ambitions. Now that's one that a person from the inside that wrote that. And now we talk about getting in the spirit of Charlemagne. That's what everybody uh, is talking about. The, this new empire, it ought to be in the spirit of Charlemagne. Do they really, truly understand the, what Charlemagne did on this earth and how much blood he shed of other people just converting them to his religion? Well, you're going to see an explosion of violence. But notice uh, Daniel 8 and verse 23, there's going to be a strong man come on the scene, and I think you may very well see that even as early as uh, this year and maybe the, even the early part of this year. Notice this, there's a strong man coming on the scene and everything's going to change dramatically when he gets in charge. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fear's countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Now this is that world dictator that Herbert W. Armstrong was talking about 70 years ago. Verse 24, And his power shall be mighty, and not by his own power. Oh, you mean there's going to be an evil spirit influence there? Yes, there is. Not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. There he goes after the spiritual Jews, in this case, God's own people. And those that are lukewarm, God says, are going to have a rough, rough time. They can't even imagine how rough it's going to be. Verse 25, notice the fantastic uh, crescendo here at the end that is just so inspiring. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, that's Jesus Christ, and He shall be broken without hand." Now that is the magnificent conclusion to all this. Let me just quickly read you a couple other scriptures. Revelation 17, verses 7 and 8, it talks about, "...and the angel said unto me, Wherefore did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns." See, that's the, those are the ten kings that Mr. Armstrong was talking about, or the ten nations. You're going to see 28 nations pared down to ten before this is over, and it's going to happen quickly. The beast that you saw was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. In other words, it was, went underground after World War II, but now it's back out. And it's not going to be under, going underground anymore. But look at verse 17, and you can see that God Himself is orchestrating this to punish people who are so evil. And you need to understand it. I tell you, we all need to understand it, but those ten nations are about to be formed, and it's going to shock the world when it all happens. Verse 10 of Revelation 17, and there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is. Well, that one is is when Mr. Armstrong was on the scene. And he explained all about it. That's why it says one is, and the other's not yet come, but now it has come. Mr. Armstrong has gone from the scene, but now there's there, the last era of God's church is here prophesying the same prophecy that Mr. Armstrong talked about so for so many years. What an and just an amazing group of prophecies. See, where the one that is, is Adolf Hitler. And Mr. Armstrong explained all of that and said there's going to come another head, the last head of the Holy Roman Empire, and then that empire is going to be destroyed forever. Jesus Christ is going to return to this earth and give it the peace and joy and happiness and just every blessing you can possibly imagine. 
He's going to fill this earth with joy, and I mean that is coming at the conclusion of this Holy Roman Empire that we read about today, even in the news media, beginning, uh, it seems like, with the Financial Times. But you're going to hear a lot more about that Holy Roman Empire and the grand smashing conclusion when Jesus Christ returns to this earth to bring us all the blessings and the joy that we should have been enjoying for 6,000 years. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. A British journalist recently advised the European Union to follow in the tradition of Charlemagne. What is Charlemagne's legacy? Few people know, even though the most prestigious prize in Europe is named after him. The rise of a dangerous new European empire is one of the most critical prophecies in the Bible. Request Germany in Prophecy to discover the war-making characteristics of this people. Learn how a cultured Europe led by Germany will soon transform itself into the most deadly church-state combine in history. Charlemagne's brutally violent rule was the second resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire. Request our free booklet, The Holy Roman Empire in Prophecy, to understand how this empire is more than a relic of history. With its pivotal contributions to Western civilization have come some painful and catastrophic consequences, and this empire is not done yet. Your Bible foretells a seventh resurrection that is now rising on the scene, poised to cause more death and destruction than Hitler. You will also receive a copy of our free reprint article, A Strong German Leader is Imminent. All the pieces are in place for Germany to dominate the world, except for a strong leader. Thousands of years ago, the prophet Daniel predicted this man's unexpected rise to power. This is certain to happen soon. Learn more about the German strongman by requesting A Strong German Leader is Imminent. Also, ask for a free subscription to the Philadelphia Trumpet News Magazine. For 26 years, we have proclaimed what the late educator Herbert W. Armstrong did, that Germany will rise from the ashes of defeat in World War II to spark the war to end all wars. To understand your war, including events in Germany, get your subscription to the Philadelphia Trumpet today. All our literature is available free of charge, with no cost or obligation to you. Order now.